Okay, so there it is. If I stop it, that's it going in. An amalgam is a mixture of a metal with mercury. And um, what happens is that because mercury is a liquid, the metals can dissolve or a number of metals can dissolve. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to take sodium. So this is, this is our sodium. It's okay, so as you can see, it's stored under liquid paraffin. And this is our mercury here. So we're going to dissolve sodium up in mercury. <clears throat> One of the quite famous ones is sodium amalgam. You've seen that sodium reacts very violently with water. And so if you want to do reactions where the sodium doesn't react so violently, you can dilute it by dissolving it into mercury. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this sodium and we'll put it in some hexane, which I'll go and get the hexane now. Um, we've got to cut it up under something inert, like hexane. People use a lot of things like hexane or petroleum ether, because um, obviously sodium reacts with, with the oxygen in the air um, and forms an oxide layer quite quickly. So we don't really want too much of that going on. Um, we want to protect it from the air as much as possible, because obviously it reacts quite violently with it. You can make quite nice amalgam from silver and mercury, and that's much more like a sort of paste if you put lots of silver in and it tends to harden quite quickly. So this is used by dentists in many countries, including the UK, to fill people's teeth. And so they have a thing rather like a syringe and squirt the amalgam or press it into your teeth and it then goes quite solid. And the mercury doesn't really leach out at all or comes out and dissolves out very, very slowly so it doesn't really harm people. What we're going to do is cut it up in small bits and then drop it in the top of here and dissolve it up in our mercury. What I'll do first actually is get on a pair of gloves because the last thing I want is sodium all over my wet hands. Though there are one or two people, I had a student called Mark who once thought that his um, teeth might be poisoning him and he had all his amalgam fillings removed and then he had oh, plastic ones put in instead and then he felt much better. Do you, do you have amalgam fillings? And my mouth's full of amalgam fillings and I think it's just probably his teeth look nicer and he felt more confident. Most people I know have amalgam fillings of my age. So we've got this little Pyrex dish here. So this is, this is hexane. Um, so it's a hydrocarbon, okay, so it's not going to react with the sodium. So we can guarantee that we're not going to get too much water in contact with our sodium when we cut it up. So sodium is pretty soft, so we can cut it up with... I can st stop getting stuck to everything in this place. So we can cut it up with um, a scalpel, which we've got here. So just get a pair of tweezers. Let's get some sort of chunk like that. Get it under the hexane as quickly as possible. Okay, so what we're going to do is like you would cut up your Sunday roast. That was a little bit stickier than, than roast beef. What we do is we just cut it into little chunks. As I expose it, it's all nice and shiny, but it'll probably tarnish a little bit in a minute. So the thing is, when we dissolve the sodium up in this, it's going to get quite hot. So. We don't want to add too much at any point because otherwise we could come undone. So if I cut a butt, just broken my scalpel. <laughs> that is not good. Mercury will also, I believe, amalgamate with gold. And so if chemists are wearing a wedding ring, you can see I don't wear a wedding ring for precisely this reason. If they get mercury on their wedding rings, the mercury amalgamates with the gold wedding ring and you get a silver patch on it. But fortunately, it can quite easily be polished off again. What does your wife think of you not wearing a wedding ring for that reason? Well, she thinks I'm a chemist. This is a magnetic stirrer bar. Um, so when we put it on this, it's got a magnet inside it and it spins and spins and spins. And so this will stir it. Um, and as you see, it'll disappear now because it'll get dragged back down. There it goes by the magnet. So if I turn this on for a little bit, so you can see our stirrer bar is now stirring it. So, okay, so it's going to go in now and it should fizz. 
with any luck, if I can get it in. There's always a little bit of worry. Will it dissolve? Okay, so there it is. If I stop it, that's it going in. We'll keep going for a little while. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some of the sodium out of the hexane. I give it a little bit of wipe to get rid of excess hexane. And then it's going in. So it's sitting on, so there's argon gas here and it slowly dissolves in the mercury. And you see it fizz when it goes in. That's quite cool. Yeah. Oh, it's massive. The thing is, is that the more you get going in, the kind of more concentrated it becomes, so the slower it, it goes in. And there it goes. So now it's all those three blocks of sodium that I put in, they're all dissolved in the, in the mercury now. So they've made the amalgam. So it's getting warm. It's warmish. Why is that warm? Because uh, when, when sodium dissolves in, or when, when metals dissolve in mercury, um, especially the, well, the alkali metals, like sodium and potassium, um, it's an exothermic reaction. So it gives off en energy in the form of heat. So this is getting nice and warm now. The point is that the sodium is now more dilute, so it reacts more slowly. But because it's a liquid, you get a clean surface all the time so that you don't get solid building up on the surface and stopping the reaction. It's a sodium mercury amalgam. And see, there's a little bit of crud on it, unfortunately. That's always the way. But now this is, so it's a little bit warm and we've got sodium dissolved in mercury. I'd say probably about a gram of sodium dissolved in that mercury. And what good would that be? Is that of any use? What could you use that for? Um, they're very good. Uh, sodium mercury amalgam is um, a very good reducing agent. I think the Spanish used them in the 16th century for, um, for um, the, 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 the people that kind of went out and conquered various places um, for purifying um, the silver that they, 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 they'd conquered. Is that your history lecture? That is. Um, that's, that's history by a chemist, which probably isn't very good. But um, I think it's used less and less amalgams because obviously the environmental impacts of mercury, people, people shy away from using mercury. 